name is Stepan, and I'll be your host for today. Uh, let's leave a couple of minutes more so each and everybody can, can join us because we have people joining us from different parts of the world. So we want to be mindful of just that time difference. So let's leave a couple of minutes so everybody can, can join this webinar. Of course, we will also uh, send you a recording of this webinar later on. And I believe that some, sometime later today, you will also get the link in your inbox. So uh, before we begin, I really want to thank our, our marketing team because they have done such a good job with, with this place. Uh, we have some really nice equipment, nice up to the point that I'm really terrified to touch it uh, because I don't want to mess anything up. And uh, we have also uh, made this room possible, which will uh, now host all of our future webinars. Full disclosure, before I say anything more, I do have a slight stutter. So I'm obviously a natural fit to hold a webinar and Mercury is in retrograde as we speak. So hopefully nothing goes wrong today. Okay, I, I see that some people are joining us right now. We actually have a lot of you joining us. Um, so I believe we are really good to start. Okay, so let me quickly go to, uh, around the topics that we will discuss today. Our main topic is, of course, resource planning. And then we will switch to time off management, which is directly connected to resource planning. Obviously, you want to know who is using their, their time off if you have people booked against a project. Then we will create some reports. Now, before I move to anything else, let's first discuss the difference between uh, macro and micro planning, because today we will talk about macro planning, okay? So macro planning would be if you are planning a long-term, and long-term could be, let's say, a week, a month, perhaps even a quarter. And uh, with macro planning, you're really focused on only the important highlights. So I'm not really uh, concerned what will my day-to-day -day look. I'm looking at a bigger picture here. Then uh, with micro planning, I'm more concerned with the minute details. So I want to know what is my next task and what it's also do for me today. I think a good example would be perhaps just to put things into perspective, uh, let's say a web developer who is working on his daily task. And this task could be, let's say, to fix the copy on the landing page. So that's a perfect example of micro planning. And then for macro planning, I would then book this developer to work on a project and I will book his time for, let's say, five weeks. And I would book four hours per each week. I'm not really concerned with his day-to-day -day tasks. I'm just planning his time on a, let's say a particular project or a particular service. So that's micro versus macro planning. Uh, obviously, when I say planning, I mean that plans can change in a sense that plans are not set in stone. So with scheduling, we have intentionally kept it as fluid and as dynamic as possible. So you still have this ability to change your plans as you go. Um, but honestly, I think the best way to present this is to create a demo. So before I actually start this demo, I just want you to know that you can ask questions. And then uh, after I'm finished with the demo, we will answer them uh, in let's say 20 minutes. So let me quickly sh share my screen with you so you can see our test account here. Uh, this account here is made as a markup of an actual agency. So the data could be a bit off, a bit unrealistic, but I'm sure that you can all uh, understand what's, what's done here. Okay, so I'm looking now at this organization and let me quickly go to the scheduling page. So scheduling is our main place where you would plan your time. And scheduling um, actually has a couple of co components in it, which I'll explain in a couple of minutes. So right now I'm looking at the timeline and all these bars that, that you see here are actually bookings. And a booking contains the time that I'm allocating to this person. And it also contains the project and the service that I'm booking this person to. So let's perhaps take a look at Lucy here. Uh, and let me create a booking for Lucy. 
And when I create a booking, it means that I'm allocating Lucy's time against a particular service on a particular project. So uh, to create the booking is actually quite easy. Uh, you could just click anywhere on the timeline and this place where you would click would be the first date of the booking because a booking uh, has a time span, obviously a start date and an end date. So I'll just click here. And now I have to select the project that Lucy will work on. So let's say I'm gonna use this one called social media posts. And now I should also select the service that Lucy will work on. So let's say it's front-end development. Now I should define the time span of this booking. So let's say I want Lucy to start on the 7th of March. And let's say that this is a week's worth of job. So it's gonna end on the 14th. Okay, so now I should define when this booking or, or how should I allocate Lucy's time for this booking. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna click on allocation. And here I will select my booking method. So, so the first and probably the most obvious one, uh, if you're seeing scheduling for the first time is to use hours per day. Um, if I were to book hours per day, that means that I will allocate eight hours per uh, or on this little time span of seven days. I mean, this is obviously changeable, so I can select any time frame or any um, pool of hours that I want. I can also use percentages. And this is really interesting because it takes into account Lucy's actual capacity. So let's say if uh, Lucy's cap uh, capacity is eight hours per day, if I put 50% of her capacity, then that will translate to four hours uh, per each day. Obviously blondes can do math as well. Um, now I'm left with total hours. And this is a really uh, good method if you're not really sure how much hours you would want to allocate per each day, but you still know that you have a pool of hours that you have to allocate for this time frame. So let's say if I put in, let's say 10 hours, then this will allocate 10 hours on this time frame, but I don't really um, bother with the fact when these hours have to be done each day. So let's say Lucy here can actually put uh, two hours and one day and then cram the rest of the eight hours on her last day of this booking. I will ha I've now clicked on this last drop down here and it's called left to schedule. And this will actually show me um, looking at my initial estimation for this service, which is front end development. So when I was creating this uh, service, I, I actually estimated that I, I would need 15 hours for the service. I, I haven't worked on the service so far and I haven't scheduled anything on the service so far. And if I create this booking, uh, I will be left with five more hours to book. So let me create this booking right now. Okay, so now it lands here into Lucy's schedule. Okay, so I, I have booked Lucy to work uh, for 10 hours uh, for six days. And since I've used the last booking method, which is total hours, I don't really care when will she do, uh, so in which day will she do those 10 hours? I'm just uh, lo looking that it should be done in this time frame. okay? So this is how would you create a booking? As I said, it's pretty easy. Um, now it's time to take a look on how you would actually manipulate these bookings or how you, you would manage them because as we said before, plans can change. So um, bookings are pretty manageable in a sense that you can move them around, which will obviously change the duration uh, or the time span of it. You can shorten them. You can lengthen them and you can also move them to a different person um, if there is a need to do so. So obviously here I can move this booking to this person, Charles, uh, if I have the need. Um, but how do I actually know if I can move this booking to a different person or how do I know if I've scheduled enough or, or am I perhaps over scheduling uh, Lucy here? If you look, at these squares here, they actually contain Lucy's capacity, which is set at eight hours, uh, but I have booked so far only three hours. And this takes into account total bookings for this particular week. So looking now at Lucy, hmm, I think I still can add a, a couple of more jobs to, to her um, 
um, schedule because still I haven't added enough uh, because she still has five hours left for each day. But looking now at Charles, hmm, that doesn't seem so good because Charles's capacity is eight hours, uh, but I have booked 13 hours and two minutes so far, right? So obviously I should change this booking in a sense that I should change how many um, hours should I allocate to Charles, or perhaps I should then move it to a different person or just remove it altogether. So let me just reduce the number of hours. Not, not so good because still I have, I'm left with, with uh, 12 hours that I need to dispose. So um, this is now quite easy because I'm actually looking um, at a couple of people here. So, um, and most of you are, are probably managing teams or 10, 20, 50, even one, 100 people. So what you wanna do is to create a custom view that will allow you to see only the departments or people or projects that, that you want. So the idea here is that you will tailor this view and then, it's, and, and then uh, once you have tailored it, uh, you will only see the data that, that matters to you. Because as I said, I'm looking now at like three or, or four people, but things are not so rosy when they're like 50 people. So let me click on filters and let me look for department. And this is actually a custom field that I've created before. And what I've done with it, I've actually divided my people into teams. Um, so each person belongs to a certain department. So let, let me just see who do I have in development. Okay, so this person, Bessie, they belong to the department of development. And let's say if I had multiple people here, obviously I, I would see all of them. Um, I can now save this view. And I can call it, uh, let's say, schedule for uh, development. And now if I save this view, I will only see the people who belong uh, to department called development. Let's try to switch things up a bit because uh, what we were looking at now was the perspective of scheduling seen through the lens of people. So right now I'm actually looking at my schedule divided by people. But what if I want to see the schedule group by, by projects? So I will just hit the group button and then select projects. And here I'm looking at the same thing, but I reversed the grouping. So now I'm actually looking at it from a project point of view. Obviously I do have a lot of projects here and I do have a lot of bookings. So let's try to tailor that as well. Um, I'm gonna click on filters once again. And I believe I do have a separate filter or separate uh, custom field for projects as well. It's called project status. And let's see what are my top priority projects. Okay, so the project that I've assigned as top priority is this one called social media posts. And here I can actually track bookings uh, for this project. So right now I'm looking at total bookings uh, that were made for the project social media posts. And as I see here, I've only booked these two people uh, on this project. Okay, uh, moving on to a bit more looking into the future in a sense that, um, because when I look here, I do notice that some people are possibly overworked. So what I may have to consider is to hire some new people. You can do that as well uh, in scheduling because you can use placeholders. And placeholders are virtual people. So they act like people. You can create bookings as if you would uh, to people. But the main difference is that they are not a part of your team just yet. So you can add a cost rate to them. You can add a capacity to them. So you can obviously create um, a cost matrix uh, for, for the future. And here I've created two placeholders. One is called designer. Uh, the other is called uh, freelance creative. And here I can also give them uh, assignments or bookings as if they were normal people. So then I can track um, how many people should I employ and when should I employ them just looking in the future. Obviously here, I haven't given them enough work in the future. So I should probably re rethink 
if I should hire them to begin with. Now, if I do hire them, um, I can actually assign their planned work to an actual person. So that kind of saves me um, double work. So then when this new person uh, really comes to my organization, then I can give them the workload that I've actually planned before. Okay. And that is how you would uh, schedule uh, bookings in a nutshell. Um, let's now move to a related topic. Honestly, it's one of my favorite topics in productive, and I do give you a permission to have a drink each time I say that something is my favorite feature of productive, and it's called time off management. Uh, time off management is directly connected to scheduling, and you would manage it from, from, from the same screen. So in the same screen, I can check who is actually working and who is probably using their time off. Obviously, uh, if they are on vacation or say sick leave, they cannot be assigned to a project. Okay, how would you first configure time off? Let me quickly go to settings. And here in settings, I'm looking for time off. And here I actually have time off categories that I created um, for the complete company. Okay, so these are uh, made on a company basis. And then later on, you can actually decide um, to which person you will as assign them to. Uh, each time of category is completely customizable in a sense that you can add a special name to it, a special icon, color. Uh, it can be limited or unlimited. Unlimited means that there is an unlimited number of days or hours that one could use. Um, it can be defined in days or hours, as I said, and it can be paid and unpaid. A really cool feature, and kudos to, to our backend team here, is the status sync, which will allow you to sync uh, the status of that time off category to your Slack. So let's say a, a person is using their vacation. Uh, you would see in your Slack account, if you are, are using Slack, that they are on their vacation. The same will go for Google Calendar, and Microsoft Calendar as well. Okay, so once I've actually defined these time of categories, let me quickly go to each person and now see um, who will receive which category. Looking again at Lucy here, I'll just hit the time off tab. So I see right now that Lucy has a category called limited time off and it's personal time, but let me give her one more entitlement. So I'll just click here and I'll look for uh, let's say vacation, and let's say I'm going to allocate 30 days for this particular category. Uh, the start date will be, let's say, January, and the expiration date will be, let's say, the 1st of June. So have in mind that you can create multiple uh, entitlements per each category. So let's say if you have, or by your local laws, perhaps, if 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 you should use, say, your vacation days up until a certain point in time, you can also define how many days would a person use per, uh, let's say, each month, each year, or each quarter even. And productive will, will know which one comes first. So let's say that you have some old vacation days from last year, you would use them first automatically before you switch to your new vacation days, even though the dates could um, clash a bit. Okay, so now I've added Lucy's time off. And here I can also establish workflow approvals because uh, some time off categories need to be approved before they uh, come into effect. Here, I'm looking at vacation and I will define who should approve this time off category before it becomes valid. Right now, uh, Luke is the default approver, but I can also add one as well. Let's say this one. And I can also set subscribers to uh, this time of category. And a subscriber is a person that will be notified uh, once this time of category is approved. Okay, um, now let's move to uh, the same topic, but from a different point of view. And I believe that this is really convenient for your, your, your staffers as well, because uh, your employees mostly want to know two answers. The first question that they want to know the answer to is how many days can I use? 
And the second will be, when can I use my vacation? And honestly, we have solved this in a pretty ingenious way. No modesty here whatsoever. So I would go here to time and then request time off. And here, I would first have to select a category that I want to request time off for. And have in mind, uh, now I'm acting as a typical em employee that just wants to go to their vacation and don't think about anything really. Uh, in this calendar, I would have to select uh, which date frame would I like. So here, let's say that I'm selecting uh, these four days. And obviously, Productive is now telling me you are requesting four days of your 30 days total. Uh, this, this is a category that's, that needs to be approved by Luke here. And when I click Request, Luke will then get in his time approvals uh, screen my request. So let's quickly take a look how, how then will this uh, be in his approval screen. So let me go to time off. So right here, Lucy is requesting some personal time and someone should approve it. It should be Charles and Luke. And here Charles has already approved it. And here's a, a cool tip for you. You can also approve a time on behalf of other people as well. So here, uh, let's say that Luke is not uh, in the office at this point, or he is using his vacation. I can also approve this on his behalf. Um, I think the, the, the whole uh, approval workflow is really useful. If let's say you have a hierarchy um, within the each approval. So let's say that uh, a time off category needs to be approved by the HR person first, and then it also we have to approved by the, let's say the project lead. And then you can kind of establish a workflow with that. Okay. Um, but let me quick, quickly go back to project planning because obviously you want to know how will this work out uh, before you approve this. So let's take a look at Lucy's schedule here. So Lucy has requested 10 days off. Um, I do see a conflict in her schedule, however. I do see that she is scheduled to work on this uh, project right here. So she is scheduled to work on office management. So I should probably move this booking to someone else or I should decline uh, this request. So that's just circling back to what I said at the beginning, um, how you would actually combine project planning and time off planning. So looking here, I can also filter if I'd like or, or group just the, the time of categories. So now I'm grouping all my people per time of category. And looking here, Charles is using uh, his doctor's appointment. Bessie is using their maternity leave. And then the Lucy uh, has requested uh, some personal days off. As you can see, there's a quite a visual difference between a time of category that's been requested and a time off category uh, that's been approved uh, at this point. So uh, we believe that this could replace your existing HR tool at the moment. So I would really encourage you to, to give this a try. Uh, just handling time off uh, and, and productive, mostly because it's super easy for, for your employees to ask for time off, to be mindful of how many days or hours off can they use. And also for you, because then you can finally take into account uh, your, 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 your project planning as well. Okay, so now it's time for a last topic and they say save the best for last, but sadly we are stuck with reports. So let me quickly go to insights. I will not actually go into super uh, depths here because my lovely colleague Gabriela has made on webinar a couple of weeks ago or a couple of months ago on the same subject. So I would strongly suggest that you check out, out our YouTube channel and then see uh, the webinar that's mostly based around insights. So uh, let me try to create a couple of reports so you can see how you can actually use the data that you have uh, added to scheduling um, in real life. So. Uh, the first one that I'll do, um, let me just quickly go to Insights Library. 
because here I have the insights or the reports pre-built, pre so there is no need to create one from scratch. Let me quickly go to people. And what I want to know is uh, what is my forecast of billable utilization by person? So this will tell me based on availability and have in mind that uh, availability is directly uh, influenced by time off. So obviously if a person is taking like a half day off or a full day off or a, let's say a two week vacation, obviously their available hours will be reduced. And taking into consideration that and what I've scheduled for client work, I wanna check the utilization of each person. Um, I'm looking uh, for the next three months, but this is a bit too optimistic if you ask me. So let's look at the next 30 days. So here I'm looking at Charles. Um, so for the next 30 days, Charles will be available for 64 hours. And for now I've scheduled 37 hours. Uh, so let's say Charles's utilization is so far so good. I mean, 60% or almost 60% for the next three days. Obviously, I do still have some time that I can allocate to Charles. Going back to uh, the um, uh, placeholders from uh, our first topic, as you can, if, hopefully you can remember that those are uh, virtual people and productive can help you just uh, to look forward to see if you actually do need to hire people. By the looks of it, I'm not really sure that I should hire people because look, um, I expect for, for a, a, a creative person to be available for 168 hours. However, I have only scheduled 48 hours so far because the last thing that, that you wanna do is to hire a new person and just have them sit around and wait for work to come to them, I guess. With the designer, I feel that there, there could be a need to actually hire a designer because I've uh, scheduled 80, uh, 80 hours actually um, for them. So the forecasted utilization looks a bit better. Okay, um, let's try to create a, a different report uh, here. I'm gonna go back to Insights Library and let's look for uh, scheduled versus worked perhaps. So here, um, if you remember on my last report, I was looking in the future. So I was looking 30 days ahead and here I'm actually looking in the past. So what I wanna know here is how well did I first scheduled uh, these people and then compare that to their actual work time. So I'm checking the precision of my initial bookings versus uh, the work time. So here, let's take a look at perhaps Charles. Well, as it seems, I was really, really accurate with Charles because I've scheduled 32 hours for Charles and he has worked 31 and a half. So my estimation was quite on, on point. Let, let's take a look at Lucy perhaps. So I've scheduled 50 hours for Lucy, and then she has worked only 22 hours. Obviously, there is a slight difference. So I should be mindful of uh, perhaps uh, offloading the, the scheduled time to a different person. Okay, now let's try to create a report from scratch, which is uh, a bit different than these pre-built -pre reports. Let's say I wanna see um, who will be out of the office let's say next week or next month. So to do that, I'm gonna create a report from scratch. I'll click here on this dropdown and I'll select from scratch. And then my data source here is bookings. So here I will actually filter it down by category or time off category actually. So here I'm looking at all my time off categories because obviously if a person is using their time off category, they will not be working. So this month, let's say if I have something for next week, hmm, it, it appears that Lucy will be handling a client. Uh, so she is using uh, a time of category called sales reservation. So obviously I cannot count on project work by, by Lucy in the next week. If I take 
or if I look more, more broadly here, let's take a look at, let's say this month. So here I can see the total breakdown of who will not be available to work in the month that we are on right now. Um, really cool thing that I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna save this insight and call it out of office for this month. I will save it and I'll make it automatic. Uh, this is a truly a great feature and this is also a cue to you to have a drink. Um, I will create a pulse and pulse is a basically uh, automatic scheduling of my favorite reports. And the best thing about it is that it works for all reports. So I'll, I'll create this report that will be sent to me each month on the first Monday or actually even better on the, on the first calendar day of the month at let's say 9 a.m. And I want to be, uh, or I want to see this report in Excel. And also I want to send it to these people as well. So this person and this person and this person. So what will happen now? I will see this report um, each and every first day of each month at 9 a.m. So this is a really cool way not to miss out on who will not be joining us for work uh, at a certain period. Okay, so those were a, a couple of reports that, that you can create from scheduling and time off. Um, I would strongly suggest that, that you go back and revisit uh, our Insights webinar if you want to know uh, how to create more reports like this. And now I would like to uh, skip right to your questions because I believe we still have some here. Okay, so let me quick, quickly go back to our um, demo account here and let's see if we still have some questions. Okay, so our first question is from Harsh. I, I believe that's how you would pronounce that. I'm sorry if I miss, if I'm miss pronouncing your name. So uh, it says how you would delete a booking and actually Mateusz, thanks Mateusz for answering it. Um, uh, you would delete a booking by going into scheduling and then you would click on the actual booking and then you would hit delete. Okay, um, Jonathan, how do you recommend this information is shared with teams individuals. Hmm. I believe that you are asking me, how would you schedule people? And then how would you share uh, who is scheduled on what with teams um, or with people in your organization? Is that correct? Okay, so cool. Thanks, Jonathan, for that. Uh, well, that's really, that really depends on the level of um, on the role level that they have in Productive. Because if you remember, Productive has multiple permissions per each role. So first we would begin with staffers and then we have co coordinators and then uh, managers and then admins. So um, each role above coordinator can see scheduling. And a coordinator would be, let's say like a junior operations manager so if you're concerned with uh, staffers seeing the schedule, uh, rest assured that they will not e uh, see scheduling as a feature and productive to begin with. So was this, um, was this something that you were concerned with or was it something else? Uh -huh. Okay, so Jonathan's question was, would I recommend having a weekly meeting to review and discuss scheduling? Honestly, that really depends on how your work is set up. Um, most of the companies would have like an operations person or a project manager or a mixture of both really. Um, but I would say from my experience, definitely yes, because you, you, you wanna check who can work on, on which project at which point in time. Just before I move to the next question, our time is a bit limited. So please send your, 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 your questions to our chat um, icon right here, where my lovely colleague Miko will, will answer them um, in a couple of minutes. 
perhaps not today, but then tomorrow. Or you can email us at support at productive.io. Okay, um, let's, let's now go to a second question. Um, can you edit time on a booking, asks Polly. Yes, you can. So I would click on a booking. And here um, I can click on the time that I've actually allocated and say here I have allocated one hour. But let's say I want to change it. So I'll allocate here four hours and then I'll change that. So obviously um, this will change the, the time for this booking. Here, Productive is actually asking me, um, should I change it for just this booking or all future bookings? Because this booking is made on a sequence. Um, and a sequence booking is if you, if, if you have a booking that should repeat for, let's say, a couple of weeks or a couple of months, then you would click here on this icon, which will then make it a repeating booking, which will then uh, go along for weeks or months, uh, depending on your schedule. Okay, um, let's see, what do, what do we have more? Okay, uh, is, uh, Sam is asking, is there a way to schedule items to be completed at certain times of the day or in a particular order? Uh, well, this is actually uh, going back to the beginning of the session when I explained macro planning and micro planning. So the answer here would be no, because in scheduling, we are dealing with macro planning. So I'm not really concerned when should I do this job um, in a sense of which time of the day or, or which job has the priority. I'm, I'm more just allocating my time to a specific service. What you wanna do is check uh, tasks which are probably more suited or definitely more suited to micro planning. And conveniently, our next webinar, which is scheduled for February, will deal, deal with tasks. So you will receive an email with the next uh, date for this particular um, uh, topic. Okay, what do we have here? Um, I think this is it actually. Okay, um, I have a question from Tokyo Ask. And Tokyo Ask wants to know, how can I create a virtual person like a freelancer and productive? Do I need to have extra account for that? Actually, no. So you would go to settings. Sorry, this, these Zoom um, pop-ups are just all over the place. Honestly, I think Zoom has like an AI where they would just put the pop-up just uh, in the button that, that you're trying to, to push. So let me search for um, placeholders. And placeholders are, um, as I said, virtual people that, that you can add to your, your scheduling. So here, I would create a new placeholder. I would give it a name. I would give it a cost rate. I would also set up a cost rate uh, so is it monthly, is it uh, um, hourly? Uh, and then once I created this placeholder, it will land here to scheduling. Uh, one cool thing about placeholders that I probably forgot to mention is, is that you can also add custom fields to them as well. So if you remember, I've, I have divided my team into departments, so I can also apply this same custom field to a placeholder as well. Okay, hopefully this answers your question. If not, you can also re reach out to me via chat. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Okay, so um, Arif Syed, I think I'm pronouncing it right, am I? Uh, if someone has requested a longer vacation that they can get on uh, or so on, uh, can you approve that request partially? Um, as you deem fit. Hmm. So uh, basically you're asking if a person, um, let's say they have asked for seven days of vacation, but perhaps uh, they cannot go on seven days of vacation uh, and you can allocate only five days to them. Is that that? Okay, perfect, thank you. So um, the answer is not automatically, so you cannot, um, 
you cannot really say to them, okay, um, you cannot go to a seven day vacation, you should use five days, but uh, you can go to um, requests, or actually in this, in this case, it's approvals. So if I were to reject this um, entry here, so Lucy has requested some personal time here. If I were to reject this, then I would have to add a reason why I'm re rejecting this. So perhaps you, you, you could use this. And then when a person is asking you for, let's say a seven day vacation, you can reject this. And then you can say to them, okay, um, unfortunately you cannot, but let's say uh, move it to a different uh, time frame, or you can ask for um, a different number of days. And then this person will receive an email saying that uh, they should do some changes on their time off request. So hopefully this, this uh, answers it. Um, but then you, you're saying now, I'm, I meant, uh, can the manager do it without rejecting it, that's not possible. Yes, that, that is not possible. You would have to re reject it first and then add the reason for it, okay? Um, I, but looking at this, I do think that th this is a really cool feature request. So I will not note it down as a feature request on your behalf. Okay. Um, I do believe that we are a bit tight on time at this point. So I would definitely suggest that if you still have some, some questions that you reach out to us via chat, uh, via email, or uh, that you book a call either with me or one of my teammates. So hopefully this was useful for you and uh, hopefully you have learned something new today. Um, again, uh, we will be having uh, a new webinar on uh, micro planning uh, in, in just a couple of weeks. So uh, hopefully I will see you there as well. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for joining and uh, I'll see you again in a couple of weeks. See ya, bye.